convince the state into restoring that funding, and we've had a hard time convincing the state of much of anything. I've so uh, the, the thing that I like about this program, I think it's a little different from the program that the state was running. In this program, the family also participates, uh, which is one of the reasons I think you're having success. It's awfully hard to change behavior when you send that child back to a family where the behavior has never changed. So uh, I want to thank you and, and the board for what you've done. Uh, I would suggest that perhaps you contact the city. We have contacted. We don't have a meeting or a time certain set yet, but we've mm. contacted them, and they know we're trying to work that out. Okay. Well, I, I think it's safe to say with the consensus up here, we'll put money in the budget again to continue the program. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead, Charles. I, I would certainly support that. I want to just make sure that, that I understood around 50 have gone into the program. Around 50 we've, we've interviewed. We get a lot of referrals. We don't always accept them. Uh, one of the things I didn't tell you, I guess, is when a, when a kid's referred to drug court, we have an evaluation. First, the trial uh, will see them and interview them and see whether they qualify under um, all those criteria I mentioned earlier. Then if they seem to qualify, we send them to Lighthouse. Lighthouse does a more intensive evaluation to determine whether they fit the criteria as well. Okay. So you've had nine graduates. How, have you had any that have started the program but, but that you said this didn't work or you had to? Well, some of them, I don't know that they said they didn't work. We didn't think their behaviors and their um, willingness to cooperate with the program was sufficiently uh, sound. And so they've been dismissed or let go or they were released without completing the program. Okay. And yeah. I don't remember how many that is. Five to seven, I think. Six. Okay. Yeah. And and, and that gives and it gives you an opportunity to bring someone else in that yes. seems we uh, we try to keep <coughs> our initial idea was to run groups of eight and keep them all together. Um, we found that it works about as well to just whatever time we get when, he, when we have them. We now keep usually between 10 and 15 um, in the program at the same time, and they're on all different phases. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? No, I just, I just want to join you in thanking everybody that works on this. I think it's a good program. Commissioners? I, I, I also agree that we should continue, and, and uh, it's nice to see a successful program. For those kids and stuff. Thank you. It, it, we think it's done a, and again, you can't measure, that's one of the reasons you can't measure those, but the five kid, nine kids who've graduated who don't have any additional drug offenses within the, within the first six months, and we would guess that during that first six months to years when we're going to more likely to have those recurring offenses. And well, I, I think, uh, Claude, that's one of the ways you do track it because the rate of recidivism I mean, you can go through those programs and you find that they slide back pretty quick once they get back with their peers, and particularly if they have no support at home. And I think that's, we think that's part of what it, we've done, that we've been able to give parents some ability to cope with some of that as well. well and, and I know uh, I, I attended, along with several of the commissioners, the first graduation, and it's pretty impressive to, to see those get, kids get up, tell their story. And then to just look at the faces of the families right. who have the, the what the law sheets and brought. Yes, sir. I'd just like to say, Claude, thank you and, um, and all your representatives out here. Uh, I do support your program. Um, I, I look at you all as, as great leaders uh, because this, what you do becomes very mentally and emotionally a tough job. And so I want to uh, compliment each and every one of you of what you're doing and back to your phases the four phases is that over a period of 12 months or yes 12 okay all right well that's the ideal yes time period some of them will take longer than that to complete it just because they don't at the very beginning they're not usually earning very points at a very good rate okay. as they move along they tend to do a lot better that's the, yeah. the plan usually the other thing i would like to mention judges um all all of those other than kyle put her off in a separate one all of those other all of the other folks who are part of the team are not paid any additional monies for anything they're they're contributing their time and effort and and roughly that those contributions both from our office and from each of them 
is about equal to what the county and the city put in each year. So we're trying to make it roughly a, a third, a third, a third, a third. You're, you're stretching the dollar. We are. You're stretching the dollar. Commissioners, any other question or comment? Any question or comment from the public? Claude, any of your, your board members or staff want to say anything? And thank the them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was looking at them, not you. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I get to stand up here, Judge. That's right. about all I do. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Next item, Jenny. Item two, consideration for approval, A, minutes of the February 16, 2015 court meeting. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion. Second, Commissioner, you had a copy of the minutes in your packet for some time. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. D, all claims for all departments. Move to approve. Second. I, I have a motion. Second, again, Commissioner, you had a copy of all the bills due and payable to Davis County Fiscal Court in your possession. Do you have any questions of the Treasurer at this time? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item C, accept into record the public officials bond for the county judge executive. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion. Second, Claude, you want to explain why we're doing this? Or not Claude, Jim, sorry. You want to explain why we're doing this? Yes, Judge. Uh, elected officials, the, the judge, myself, sheriff, county clerk, <coughs> are required by the statute to be bonded at, for different amounts. And as part of that bond for the audit process and for the court's benefit so that they know it exists, it needs to be entered into the record and it will be filed in the county clerk's office. Okay. This is a little later than most. Um, did you do anything that I don't know? No, about? <laughs> not that I know of. Okay. Any question or comment, commissioners? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. D, award bid number 9, 2015, two steel single wall tanks surplus sale. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion second. Jordan? Yes, Judge. These items were rendered useless to the county due to a change in um, fuel storage regulations. Uh, interest was shown in the items, so we opened it to the public via sealed bid. Davis County Fiscal Court received one bid concerning bid number 9, 2015, the bid of Robbie Hocker. Being the only bid submitted, it is our recommendation to dispose of the surplus items to him in the amount of $20. So we opened it up to public bid, only had one bid, and under, uh, in full disclosure, Robbie Hocker is an employee of Fiscal Court. That is correct. But the public did have the opportunity to bid on these. That is correct. Okay. Question or comment by the commission? What a deal. <laughs> <laughs> it, we really would have paid $20 to take them, so I'm glad we were able to get 20 bucks out of Robbie. Any other question or comment? Question or comment by the public? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. E, award bid number 10, 2015-2005 Ford Crown Victoria surplus sale. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. Second. Mr. Johnson. Yes, Judge. This was a canine unit of our sheriff's department that was replaced and has since been sitting in our impound lot. Interest was shown by a canine training facility, so the item was open to the public via sealed bid. Davis County Fiscal Court received one bid from Gerard K. Zimmerman of the canine training facility, Dog World. Uh, it is our recommendation to dispose of the surplus item 10-2015 to him in the amount of $1,000. Question or comment by the commission? Question or comment by the public? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. F. Advertised for bid number 11, 2015, four used fifth wheel tractors and bid number 12, 2015, four used open top walking floor trailers. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. Commissioners, this is just permission to advertise. Uh, Mr. Smith, you want to talk to us about this? Yes, sir. Uh, this and uh, the next item, G, go hand in hand with each other. Uh, we are currently in negotiations with the city of Henderson regarding uh, taking over the operation of the transfer station that they have and then bringing that trash to the Davis County landfill. We are pursuing two different you know, courses at the same time because of the time involved. Uh, Henderson's current contract will expire May 31st. 
So we are looking to, uh, our first option, honestly, is to find a private company to run that transfer station and haul the trash. Uh, if we do not get a good response, we need to move forward in purchasing our own trucks and trailers to do that in-house. And so that's why we're advertising for bid of, of uh, for four uh, trucks and trailers, and then the next item to be for uh, advertising an RFP. Okay. Question or comment by the commission? Question or comment by the public? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. G, advertise RFP operation of the City of Henderson Transfer <coughs> Station, including transfer of solid waste. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion second. And again, you heard Mr. Smith's explanation. It's, <coughs> it's our druthers that we would be able to find someone who would operate the transfer station uh, as opposed to us operating it. Any question or comment? Question or comment by the public? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. H, transfer James Hamilton from a solid waste truck driver to a service technician in administration effective February 12, 2015. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion second. Uh, David, do you want to talk to us a little bit? Uh, yes. Um, we uh, decided to uh, transfer Mr. Hamilton from the solid waste department uh, to do some work here at the courthouse that had been vacant for the last few months. Okay. And I think we, uh, I think the last meeting we approved advertising to replace his position. Right. Uh, this is not a new position. This is a position. No, this, this position. Yeah. This position has been vacant here at the courthouse right. for um, over six months. Okay. Uh, question or comment by the commission? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. I hired Jeremy Glass and Dallas Roberts as seasonal park attendants at Panther Creek Park, effect effective after March 1, 2015. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. Second. Commissioners, the, these are just seasonal people. We hire uh, folks from time to time to work in our park system. This does not increase the number of people that we normally have on staff. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, consideration for appointment. A, Becky Whitehead to the RWRA board. Term 3115 to 3119. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion. Second. First of all, I want to thank Becky for her two terms of service on the RWRA board. Uh, we have some folks here from RWRA. That board is is what I would term one of the major boards. Uh, it, it takes a lot of knowledge uh, and dedication to serve on that board, particularly since they're serving engineers who often don't have the sense that, well, I won't go there. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank Becky for agreeing to serve another term. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. B. David Johnson to the Ethics Board, term 3115 to 3118. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. Second. Commissioners, uh, Mr. Johnson has served one term on the Ethics Board. Has done a good job. I contacted him the other day and he agreed to serve another term and I appreciate and know that he'll do a good job going forward. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 4, ordinances. A, first reading of KOC 611.12, 2015, an ordinance authorizing the establishment of assessment warrants for the Locust Hills area subdivision. Commissioners, this is the first reading, so we don't need a motion. We will uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, Dean Binky is in the audience. Uh, Dean, I guess you're here to explain it. Uh, commissioners, all of you except uh, Commissioner Coger have had these warrants come before us before. Dean, you want to explain to us what we're doing? Uh, sure. Thank you, Judge. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank the fiscal court for moving the start time of the meeting up to 2 o'clock. <laughs> Did George pay you to say uh, that? <laughs> uh, but to do a couple of You may not get these warrants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll watch that. I say all right. Forward. I brought along a couple of our henchmen, uh, Sean O'Brien and Dean Bank. And, uh, no, and to introduce, because he probably hasn't been introduced yet as the director of regional audit, but you all know Joe Schlepper. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Joe. questions to get tough. Uh, thank you. Uh, not having the overhead, I thought you'd have the maps up and stuff. Yeah. 
I know you've been sent to them. I have copies, but not for everybody. But do right. you need to pass around copies of the, the map? I, I don't know, yeah. Commissioner. We've got them a copy of the map uh, in the in the explanation. Sure. Okay. So we we can follow along. All right. All right. So just to go through the financial on the Locust Hill subdivision. Right. Um, the summary of the sheet or the summary sheet shows the breakdown of the dollars spent. That assessment to the individual properties would be $3,865.40. Um, you look at the total cost of the project was 447000 and odd change. The uh, EPA grant that we were able to get on the project was very helpful, uh, helped bring the cost down for everybody. As far as the uh, map you're looking at, there, there are 71 accessible properties. They're all single family residential. Uh, there are like four properties that are in the subdivision that are kind of blocked out. They, those already had survey. So there's three of them gravity back through the sewer system on the right, neighbor road that side. behind them, and then one to get in and develop. They had to put in a pump station to get in. So they were already customers, so they're not part of the assessment. Okay. Dean, it, it looks to me like the, the cost was $3,865. That's the assessment. Uh, the EPA grant saved those folks about $2,400. Uh, so, you know, it could have cost them $6,300. Instead, it's going to cost them $3,865. So that's, that's pretty cool when we can get a grant to help offset some of those costs. <laughs> Commissioners, any, uh, how, long, how long do these folks have to get on the sewer? And that's not driven by you. I think that's driven by a local health, David K. Health Department that's ordinance. Yeah. That's their call. Uh, where we go from here, if it gets approved today, then we send out letters to everybody. We give them like 45 days to not have an assessment put on their property. Right. They can go ahead and pay us money if they want. After that, then letter says two, three months before that process is over. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, they'll have one year to connect on. At the at the end of one year, if they haven't come in, got permitted, and started the construction, then we give a letter. Okay. Do at that time do you start charging them for the service? Yeah. Okay. So they're going to get charged for the service regardless of whether they contract to get put on or not. Okay. Once they get connected, how long do they have to pay the thirty-eight hundred and sixty-five dollars for service now? Uh, they have two options, more or less. They can pay us in full, um, or they can go on the, the twenty-year pay plan that we have. If, if the house is sold, does it become due and payable at that time, whatever the balance, or can that be transferred? And yeah, no, usually they always settle up at that time. Okay. Okay. Commissioners, any other question or comment? Yes, sir. If you could ex explain on, on the uh, EPA grant amount, is, is, there, is that captioned by, by how many – Houses are are involved, or is it by the the, the uh, economic level of the people that live in those houses, or how how is that determined? Uh, this one actually is a little different. You know, we've done the coal severance grants and we've done CDBG grants. This is a separate appropriation from EPA, so I'm not sure what all criteria they use. I think it did follow the CDBG. Uh, over 50 percent of the expense would be paid by it, but you know, it's it's okay. got a third of it anyway. Right. Okay. I think uh, not the next. The next one, I don't believe, has a grant at all to help offset the costs that we're going to be a CDBG grant that we're Hopefully. trying we're trying to Hopefully. get, and and that's based on the median income of the neighborhood. Uh, so, but I don't believe that came into play here. Any other question or comment? I guess um, my only question in the different subdivisions. Um, I guess y'all are explaining to the people why. Some you're getting a grant and uh, the the cost is less. I know this other subdivision, it's going to be a lot higher. So from the people uh, complaining a lot, one getting a better deal than the other, uh, is that being explained to yeah. these to the to the people in these yeah, subdivisions? Yeah, usually people understand it, and we we've always done what we could to get grants. We've held up construction on some projects for a few years just to see if there's any monies out there to get. Um, so we, we try to work that, and you'll find the next one's got a different name. Right? Yeah, that's it's what I'm looking at. Not, it's yeah. not that much money. But well, anyway. when they come to the courtroom and start talking to us about it, especially, I just like answer. to be able to help try to explain that. Okay. Yeah, and, it, and most of them have been less than this, like you said, it's yeah. been like 6,200 or whatever that number is. Um, 
we didn't find any because costs are going up. The unit prices are paying these days and stuff is going up. So some of these higher assessments are going to be coming. Okay. Well, and, and the other thing is you take in more and more subdivisions and or homes, it becomes more and more costly to do. You're getting away gravity systems. You're having to put lift stations in, and you're actually having to go in and tear up existing streets. And if you can't go down, you know, it, it, every one of these projects is in and of itself a different project. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there, there's always that explanation. Any other question or comment? Question or comment for the public. Okay, next item, Jenny, and you may as well stay there, Dean. B, first reading of KOC 611.13-2015, an ordinance authorizing the establishment of assessment warrants for the Sunrise Drive subdivision. Commissioners, again, this is first reading, so we don't need a motion and our second. Uh, Dean, you can give us an explanation, but this is one that we needed to take in many, many years ago, and I'm happy to see that we've done it because these folks – these folks had no ground, no place, no way to repair their failing septic system. Small lots and yeah. high groundwater. So yep. had everything it's just kind of terrible. Done. Okay, go ahead and explain it to us. Okay. This project, I mean, we were real, like Al said, we were real happy to be able to get in there and get this neighborhood knocked out. We've been looking at it for years, for a long time. The only option we had was to go to the combined sewer system, and we weren't allowed to do that. So as things developed to the south, we made it work with that. So it was nice to get this project to put in. Um, the, you see the summary on the cost here. You know, the total assessment comes out to $4,111.27. And I actually brought my maps on disk. I was going to show you if you wanted to go there. But this actually fits in now with our, our long-term control plan mm -hmm. and everything to do with CSA. We're able to... In the long term, we have more projects to do, but eventually we're going to be able to take the old Artford neighborhood, I think it's about the equivalent of 430 homes, uh, potentially the uh, fairgrounds neighborhood, another 200 plus homes, and we may be able to take all that sewage to the south and get it out of the combined sewer. Mm -hmm. and we've done a lot of different projects that have done, that work to, to accomplish that. Uh, this one helps a bunch. So. So the main interceptor that goes up to take that sewage and stuff is going to help that neighborhood. It brings their costs down because we can do the taking. Okay. So the, whenever you decide what neighborhood to go into, what what criteria do you use to make that decision? Is it the EPA driving it or is it There's, there's several things. The, usually what happens, the first one is if we have a neighbor that comes in with a petition of 75% signatures, that we push them to the front of the list. That means the neighborhood wants it, you know, and there will always be a few people that doesn't pay to, you know, serve them well or whatever. But if we have 75% signatures, that's in there. The, as you pointed out, EPA, Board of Health, if, if there's health issues or problems or known septic leak leaking into the streams and stuff, can be a priority because we have to get to another neighborhood and we're passing through your neighborhood. You know, if it's that convenient, I mean, that's where this interceptor kind of helps here. Is that we needed to go through there. We, we could have picked a different route to put an interceptor in, but instead we used dual purpose. We put it in a pass where it would help the people on Sunrise Drive and helps bring the cost down for them, but it also pushes up that priority to get to it. Um, there's several things on the criteria list. Those are the main ones that we just ran with that. Okay. Commissioners? <coughs> a question. Yes, sir. Is this They'll probably look at that as well into a subdivision, you know, and signatures of what's going to be the, the best way of, of delivering it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, at one time they actually thought we had to put a pump station yeah. in the neighborhood to serve it. Uh, you, Dean, you might not be able to answer this, but since Mr. Shepherds was formerly on the city, a city engineer, and they were talking about a boat dock. Is that boat dock going in on that, that uh, retention basin over on Brackenridge Street? <laughs> no. Water does that thing hold? Uh, which, which basin? The, the basin there on the corner. Is it 26th and Brackenridge? Uh, any any, any, any idea? That's oh, a... Gone. Whole lot. Engineer, you're yeah, on. it's that's a huge basin. I yeah, it went, is. yeah. A lot of storage. Yeah. Don't you have a lot of right. Five feet vertically, you can go up. Five what? Five vertical feet. 
that's that's a big big deal. We've enjoyed watching that be constructed. Yeah. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions? Question or comment by the audience? Okay, next item. Thank you, Dean. I consideration for discussion, a other business to be brought before the Davis County Fiscal Court, and I do show one. Okay. Hire Misty Payne as a vet tech in the Department of Animal Control, effective upon successful completion of pre-employment screenings. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion second. David? Yes, this again is to uh, replace a, an empty position. Uh, we advertised, and I believe uh, Commissioner Cogar, I think we interviewed four people. Five. Five people. We interviewed five people, and and we agreed that um, that uh, this young lady, Misty, is is the candidate, uh, best candidate. So we request approval to hire her to fill this uh, empty position. Question or comment by the commission? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. B. Public comments. This is time during a meeting in which we invite the public to come forward, identify yourself at the podium. You're welcome to speak on any item other than what was on the agenda. No takers. Next item. C, comments by Davis Fiscal Court. Commissioners, before we do that, I have John Klaus with EMA out in the audience. And John, I think you were here to give us a little report on the storms or what, what went on in the past couple weeks. I'm here to answer whatever questions I can. Um, the, um, the initial storm, February 16, uh, rainfall average was 1.5 inches and the National Weather Service recorded that we had officially six inches of snow that varied throughout the county up to about nine inches in some places. We recorded less, uh, significantly less than a quarter inch of ice. Uh, lowest temperature we reached during that time frame was negative eight degrees Fahrenheit. That's not counting wind chill. That was straight, uh, straight temperature. Um, uh, state declared emergency uh, through the governor's office. We did not declare one locally, and we had school closings for five days. What other information were you wanting on that, sir? That's that's fine. The okay. the uh, did I mean the EMA participated in setting up and some warming shelters I think during that yes, time. Yes, we helped uh, we helped coordinate that uh, through various agencies and uh, there were five nights uh, that shelters were operated. Uh, warming centers actually were, were operated and uh, 39 folks were uh, housed. Some of those were duplicates, uh, night to night, but 39 total uh, in that first event from February 16 to February 20. A secondary event, March 3 through March 6. Um, rain totals varied from, uh, we had about one and a half inches on our roof here at the, at the courthouse, uh, all the way to about two and a half inches uh, deep south in the county. We had a dividing line in the uh, in the weather that, that passed over us up to the northern part of the county, we got less than we got down south. Snow, uh, again, National Weather Service gives us about eight inches officially uh, here in this region. And uh, we had 12 and sometimes even larger uh, amounts than that recorded south in the county. We had, again, less than a quarter inch of ice. Um, lowest air temperature recorded was negative one Fahrenheit. And again, that's uh, standard temperature. That's not with wind chill. Uh, shelters were operated for three nights and seven folks were accommodated over those three nights. Um, state declared emergency through the governor's office and again we did not declare one locally. We had three days of school closing and um, if you've looked at the weather reports we had big rain coming in tonight probably or tomorrow definitely. So what's left of the white stuff should be gone. Good. The creeks uh, at this point, Panther Creek has been dropping all day. But I just checked it before I came up here, and of course it's rising now. <laughs> but it's uh, it's not up to ten foot. It's uh, about nine and a half feet right now. Okay. Everything seems to be moving moving well as far as uh, the ditches and all that. We've got spillage outside the areas, but that's to be noted. Uh, the river is up at Candleton and at Newburgh. They're both at flood stage. Uh, we're hit 
flood the bottomland a little bit, but nothing of significance, and they don't anticipate any great spillage of uh, either the Green or the Ohio. Okay. Good to answer. Commissioners, any questions, John? Mark, uh, how many roads do we have closed today? Do you know? Thank uh, you, John. I think we're sitting at about 15 or so county roads. We have, uh, I believe, Highway Department underwater. Okay. Uh, John, real quick, do you have, how much rain are they calling for? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you, um, any idea? Have you seen anything about rainfall and what effect it might have? It shouldn't have much effect, if any, on on the green in Ohio. May not not immediately. Uh, yeah, right now they're they're reporting uh, uh, under an inch, uh, more okay. like three quarters of an inch over the next uh, 24 or so hours. Uh, I think the green in Ohio is supposed to crest Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in that. A couple area. feet above flood stage. Yeah, several feet above flood stage, so uh, uh, of course we're still saturated. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, we're getting some room in our ditches, as John said. Panther Creek is, is starting to fall. It's getting some room. Uh, tributaries are, are open. It's just doesn't have a lot of place to go at this point. I don't think they're calling for any any freezing temperatures that I see for the next week or so. Uh, the temperature should stay up, um, not quite where we are normally at this time of year over the last 10 years, but we're definitely going to be up okay. above freezing probably in the 40 to 50 category. Um, and the, uh, the retention basins are doing very well. Uh, okay. We've been watching those fill up and drain out and do, do various things, so that's uh, provided a lot of benefit for us. Okay. Thanks, John. Jenny? Comments by Davis County Fiscal Court. I'm going to lead it off. A couple comments. Uh, first off, uh, we are in the process of, of setting up a permanent criteria for warming shelters in the city of Owensboro and Davis County. I met with the city manager the other day, and uh, through the very hard work of Andy Ball, the EMA director, uh, hopefully, hopefully we have no more need for a warming shelter this year. And by the time we get into winter next year, we will have a criteria set up and, and something that will automatically open. And we won't be running around like our heads were cut off uh, as we did on occasion uh, with this bad weather that came in. Secondly, um, I want to assure everyone that Davis County Fiscal Court takes the weather and weather events very seriously. I know over uh, storms, we have taken, and myself in particular, have taken a little bit of bashing because of my failure to declare a state of emergency. Well, first of all, when you're dealing with, it doesn't take me declaring a state of emergency for you folks to know that it's dangerous out on slick, ice-covered, snow-covered roads and that you should stay off of them. So you don't need a state of emergency to tell you that. Secondly, by declaring a state of emergency, it doesn't mean that you get to stay home and draw unemployment. It doesn't mean that you get to stay home, get a paid day vacation by your employer. Uh, what it does mean is that we may suspend normal purchasing rules for fiscal court. And personally, I take it very seriously that we go through the set guidelines that we've established over the years for the protection of your tax dollars. So I, I've declared one, and that was during the flood of 2011. <coughs> second, the second thing a state of emergency does, it allows us to recover extraordinary cost. Now, extraordinary cost isn't overtime and salt that would be used for a snow event because the county engineer, being the good engineer that he is, good and engineer, we don't use a lot together either, do we? has budgeted monies for snow removal. It's already in our budget, so those expenses are not extraordinary and above normal. Now, during the flood, we had extraordinary expenses. Debris removal off the roads that flooded, 
and we had a lot of roads that were undercut and had to be rebuilt and repaved. During the ice storm in 2009, many of you remember the piles and piles of limb and debris that we stored. Green River uh, Steel property, I mean, that was the big burn area. Those are extraordinary. We can document those and, and we can recover the cost. Uh, I had a thing from EMA that talked about the impending weather approaches. Um, you know, you have pot potential states of emergency can be declared, but what they say is, in all honesty, snow declarations are extremely difficult to obtain. If a neighboring county declares a state of emergency, then we're able to piggyback on that neighboring county. We had lots of counties around us that said, yeah, there's a state of emergency. Secondly, and more importantly, I think, is the overarching declaration made by the governor in both events. He declared states of emergency in the Commonwealth of Kentucky that covered every county in our Commonwealth. So I just wanted folks to understand that I take declaring a state of emergency very seriously, and I believe that it should only be done when necessary. I remember that old uh, fairy tale about the boy who cried wolf. We declare states of emergency for every rain event or dusting of snow, uh, then we end up having people just not believing that it's important to follow instructions. Uh, Got a lot of fish fries going on in the county. Commissioner uh, Castle and I attended uh, one this is past Friday at Whitesville. I know they've got them at uh, St. Pius X and Precious Blood and St. Alphonsus and Lourdes. And just every Friday night you have your choice of where you can go and eat fish. I would encourage all of you to, to support those local parishes and their efforts. Uh, Commissioner Wathen, anything? I just want to uh, mention a conversation I was having with Mark Brasher this week. He was he he was saying how proud he was of our road crews. We we cleaned a 12-inch event snow event in 48 hours. So I too am proud of that, and I I'm uh, wish you'd pass that on to the men. We appreciate that. That's hard work, dangerous work, and they did a nice job. The other thing I want to mention is that, you know, for at least three years we've been looking for the right time for these meetings, and I think we might have hit the sweet spot. <laughs> I'm sitting I'm sitting here looking, and there's not a person here that doesn't have to be here, Commissioner. So right. uh, five of them left. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, they were here to support Claude. Anything else? No. That's I enough. <laughs> I'd like to add to uh, Commissioner Watson's comment to Mark and your crew, and and delivering it in a safely manner. And I noticed today that I believe part of your crew is out starting to patch some potholes. So uh, you're not getting a complaint. You're already moving forward, getting on top of it. So, uh, and I agree with Commissioner Wath and uh, make sure that you thank each and every one of your people, your staff, as well as your workers. So thank you. Commissioner Castle. I'll echo a, a word of thanks to our crews that, that uh, took care of our roads, and, and I think they did a good job as well. Uh, and Commissioner Coger, you mentioned potholes. It is pothole season. We're seeing, well, I saw a car go in with three small children and a dog, and the car came out with a dog, and <laughs> I didn't don't know where the kids are. If you, if you have some potholes, need to report potholes, uh, you can call the road department at Operations Center. That's called the county engineer, Mark Brasher. His cell phone number is. <laughs> uh, or you can call here at, the, at uh, fiscal court, and we will pass the information along. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate uh, Bruce Williams and Park Maintenance. He's celebrating his 15-year anniversary. Uh, Bruce does a good job for us, I think, doesn't he, Ross? It's hard working with the parks director, Bruce, so... We appreciate you staying here all these years. Uh, Claude, tell me how we're going to handle this. We do have a closed session uh, that we won't take any action in. I hate to, to go out, go into Just closed. recess the meeting, Judge. Go in then to the Public Improvement Corporation meeting, run through the agenda, um, adjourn the Public Improvement Corporation meeting, come back into open session, go into closed session, and that'll be the end. 
Do I have a motion? <laughs> All we need right now is a motion to recess motion to the recess. current meeting. Make a motion to recess, I guess. <laughs> okay. I have a motion to recess and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. Now we're going to have our now public. Now we open the uh, Davis County Public Improvement okay. Corporation. Call it to order. And so I will call the Davis County Public Improvement Corporation meeting to order. Uh, folks, you can go ahead and leave if you wish. And Judge, just for the record, I guess the Public Improvement Corporation is the one that the Thank county you. set up to buy property and um, the reason we have to have a meeting is there's a new member now, so we have to acknowledge the new member and appoint the new member. Okay. Uh, Jenny, would you <coughs> read the first item? Item one, approval to appoint Al Mattingly, Charlie Kasslin, George Wathen, and Mike Hoger as the directors of the DCPIC. Terms expire in January 1, 2019. And folks, in this case, and it's, it applies to all of us, I don't think we, we can abstain from voting. We just <laughs> will move through this. So do I have a motion to so do moved. this? I have a motion okay. and a second. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Two, approval to appoint Director Al Mattingly as president of the DCPIC term expiring January 1, 2019. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any, uh, any discussion or questions? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And I abstain. Next item, Jenny. Item three. Approval to appoint Director Charlie Castlin as Secretary of the DCPIC, term expiring January 1, 2019. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any uh, question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And you Charlie, I assume you abstain. Yes, abstain. Next item. Four, approval of the minutes of the April 26, 2011 meeting, meeting number 177. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and second. <coughs> uh, Commissioner, you've had a copy of the minutes in your packet at some time. for some time. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Five, discussion of other business. I assume there is no other business. Not so that I'm aware of. Without <laughs> exception, we stand the... Uh, meeting of the Davis County Public Improvement Corporation stands adjourned. Now we Mo uh, motion to um, go back into open session or reopen the um, fiscal court meeting. So Commissioner I, Castlin, thank you. I can make a motion to reopen. It's already com Commissioner oh, Castlin did it oh. already, so do you I'll second. second then. All right, we have a motion second. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. E, e, enter into a closed session per KRS 61.810-1B, deliberations on the future acquisition or sale of real property by a public agency, but only when publicity would be likely to affect the value of a specific piece of property to be acquired for public use or sold by a public agency. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and we won't take any action. 